Okay, so we're here for another project presentation with Elm. I don't think Elm we have done any project presentation with you before, have we? Sorry. No, I don't think we we haven't done anything like uh, uh we, we did anything like this before. So uh, how 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 about we start with your introduction? Uh, tell us who you are and uh, what have you made right now and then we'll take a look at your screen and we'll go deep in, in, into some details of the project okay <laughs> so my name is el mubashir and i'm nine years old and and i learned in the stem in the stem educators and the city school okay what do you like to do for fun I I like to um, um play games and code and uh, and go cycling. Okay, interesting. So and you have taken uh Scratch level one with us. You have also taken Python level one, and this was uh your recent course was Scratch level three. Yeah, yeah. and I just completely skipped Scratch, scratch number two. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, because you keep on learning a lot on your own. That's really good. So let's take a look at your project now. Uh, you can share your screen and we'll like, uh, uh, we'll want to see uh, what have you made. This is my project called as Night's Quest. Uh -huh. and, there, and there is also a Python version of it, but I will show you it. I will show it, show it to you later. Okay. So when we, so the uh, this cool thumbnail, mm -hmm. and also and also it also tells the instructions here. Collect all of the keys and escape without getting caught. And we start, and and the knight is our player. Okay. We move by arrow keys. Mm -hmm. And we have to collect all of the keys. This one, this one, and this one. Okay. So there are three keys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have to collect all of them. Uh, and, and, and and when we collect all of them then and, and then the door and then you can move, go through the door and win but but if you get caught by a guard mm -hmm. you lose okay game over you and, lose and when you press backslash backslash it starts again mm -hmm. Oh yeah! If you press enter, it just it just it just bunch the game. I thought you were gonna trick the guard, like let him get really close, and then you're gonna uh just jump into the door really quickly. Yeah, but and I was going to do that, and the arrow key didn't work. <laughs> Somehow. So is it difficult to play, or is, what? What is the difficulty level? Difficulty level. Mm -hmm. uh, I I haven't added added any difficulties, but uh, but this is. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, when you so, when you go to the door, I only won. Okay, all right. So good. Uh, game over. You won. Press backslash to play again, and press enter to quit. So what happens when you press enter? When you press enter, mm -hmm. it it goes to the it goes, it just stops. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. It seems fun. Uh, can we take a look at the code now? Like, how have you made it? The thumbnail is also pretty good. Good. Um, that uh, there's some sort of like rays behind the guard and the and, and the knight, uh, meaning that they're going really fast. So what? Uh, what is the structure of the program? Where does it start and what happens? It, where does it go? It starts here. Just that one, uh, just that one program, and mm -hmm. and that controls everything. Mm -hmm. 
when I see start initialize and forever loop and when it initializes and it initializes the position so it goes to negative 15 negative 15 okay and in the forever loop it, it, there's all there's also a speed run timer which which is like this yeah there's mm -hmm. a speed run timer yeah you and these are only for speed runs mm -hmm. and 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 this is available time which is for the speed run mm -hmm. Okay, I see that you're using if touching color. Um, though you could also maybe like uh mention if touching the guard sprite. No. No, no, they're clones. They're clones. Okay, but wouldn't that work with every clone? Like, um, even if you have multiple clones of the guard sprite, if you mentioned if touching guard, then it would still work with all of the clones. No. Have you tried that part? No, I want to do that. Also, it will and the the command to move, which mm -hmm. is this this okay. whole code. Okay, good. So keeping it separate so that it's more organized and it's not like uh, very complex in the forever loop. So that's good. And we yeah, get to and just from this a whole code. Okay. And that move and like what's about uh, what's the player position? The the player position starts at negative fifteen fifteen, which is which is uh, which is um, which is. Uh, uh, Seven six, mm -hmm. I I mean six seven, of the grid. Mm -hmm. I think, and this is a thirty by and and this is a, a thirty by thirty in box. Okay. And and each of them make the grid, and it's exactly the same as the Python one. Okay. So, so if if the up arrow key, yes. So uh, how did you make the grid? Because uh, the player's movement is quite locked inside the grid. So it's interesting to know like um, how these boxes are made of equal sizes and the whole grid covers the screen really well. I, ju I just use this, which is loading. Oh, yes. oh, this is a new one. So this is a new one that I have actually like not used before. Can you like- uh, and, then I just, and then I just use the, uh, a fill command and then made the checkerboard and these okay 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 so you see this is the great thing about scratch that like we were thinking that in order to like help um uh, uh, in order to make it easier to learn the xy coordinate system we would import such a background into the project and that will make it easier for all the students to see how the X and Y coordinate system works. But Scratch did that already. So Scratch brought, uh, is it in uh, the, uh, you're using the regular Scratch software, right? You're not using Scratch Turbo. I'm not using Scratch Turbo. Okay, okay, okay. And, and this is your Scratch, I don't that make it, makes it dark mode. Okay, all right. Okay, you were talking about the movement code, like how does that work? Yeah. If an arrow key is pressed, then then in the in the player will go in that direction, and if it's touching the wall, then it would go to the opposite side. Mm -hmm. And and then it checks if the if if the if we have collected all the keys and and uh, and, uh, and go to the door. And then if it if it does if and if all of the keys are collected then and then the player wins wins. Okay, all right. So how did you come? And, how did you come to know that this would be thirty steps or minus thirty? Its name was its name was x x y grid thirty pixels each box. Okay, okay, okay. Understandable. 
and 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 if if and if the player hasn't connected all the keys, then it would go back into the opposite direction. Okay. Now, why is there a length of keys over there in that part of the program? And this is a list for for keys. Okay. All right. But do we really need a list over there to manage three keys? Yeah. Could we like not do that with a variable? We we can also but we can okay so but like if it is not hurting the program if it's still like easier to load uh, because I I believe like list maybe uses a lot more space uh, uh I just related to the Python code because it uses lists okay 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 but even in the Python code we could also use a variable a list probably uses a lot more space than a variable. I'm not sure how much more, but I think it uses a few, a, a little bit more space. And also, I I got do, uh, I got backslash and enter key pressed by mm -hmm. you guessed it scratch add-ons. Okay, otherwise it's not in the regular uh, uh key pressed system. It's not in the regular key pressed system. Okay, I'll also check. I haven't like tried that thing before. So what gave you the idea of this project, like night, uh, a, a night's quest? Where did you like uh, uh, get the inspiration? Is it like from any game that you've already it is, played? It is from this Python game, which I am going to sh show you later. Okay. And then, and then there's also player pause, which is which is here, and it and it manages and it manages the x and y coordinates of the player and and you will ask why is that when mm -hmm. it's a thing to do in the guard sprite so in the border there is nothing <laughs> mm -hmm. and so in in the guard when i start is a uh, uh wait, wait 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 when i receive start the game hide go to x 15 y 75 go to x negative 15 y negative 75 and and it creates two clones mm -hmm. and when i started the clone show show mm -hmm. and because the main sprite is hidden and when i didn't do the show then the clone will the clones will just be invisible yes exactly Another way of doing this is that you can um, put the show block in. Oh, that's exactly what you've done it. You've said when I start as a clone, show. Okay, that makes sense. And there's a forever loop, and and there's a move guards. Okay. Move guard. And in this definition of move guards, this is where the player player position x positions come in. Mm -hmm. If and the X position is greater is greater than the X position of this card. Okay. If, and if it's and, and those are and and those colors are for hit boxes. Those are hit boxes, which are which are here, which are here, 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 and here. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, hit boxes are specific to like these turns on this inner wall. Yeah. Here, these, okay. And yeah. in those special scenarios, it is supposed to do something else like change Y by minus 30 so that the guard would come down. Uh, and if we didn't add the hit boxes, then, and then the guard would just stop here and just uh, do nothing at all. Okay, okay, okay. So you had to build some exceptional cases over here. But what if it's like not in those hit boxes? What uh, what will it do in the else scenario if X is not greater than X position? If it's touching no hit boxes, then and then then it would just move normally like like this. Okay, okay, okay. So I I understand now that if the X position of the player is greater than the X position of the 
um, guard and it's not touching any hit boxes, then it is supposed to move to the right and with the help of this move 30 steps, correct? Yeah. But why is this yeah. move 30 steps? And shouldn't, it be like, wall... shouldn't it be change X by 30 steps? Move 30 steps and change X by 30 steps are both the same. Um, Not if the direction is changed. Yeah. Mm. And, 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 and all of the sprites are always in the same direction. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Then, then it would be easier to use the move 30 steps. And also same with this one the, mm -hmm. and, and these two. Okay. Also, when I and also, uh, and this uh, uh, that uh, uh, also I forgot in the end the ending code of the of this this bit. Mm -hmm. Wait zero point two five seconds. This is a cooldown on moving, and and it's the same with the guard. Uh, the guard guard has zero point five seconds of cooldown. Okay, okay. And you like added it at the end, obviously, because the loop is actually running somewhere else. All of these things are conditional statements. And when I receive game over, then then the clones will just yeah, delete. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Interesting. To the door. Interesting. To the key. <laughs> the door doesn't have like much to do. Yeah. So when I see start, it deletes all of keys to collect and then does this. Yeah, it, it makes three clones at negative 45, 75, 15, negative 75, negative 195, and 135. So these are fixed and, position of all the keys? Yeah. Maybe the it next step, it. maybe maybe another thing would be to like give the keys random positions next time. I mean, you would have to like fix them between any of the boxes. So you will have to do calculations. Yeah, yes, I, was planning to, I was planning to do that, but it would uh, take a list with many coordinates. Mm -hmm. It will take like multiplication of uh, um, like the whole number of columns and the whole number of uh, rows that you have in this entire grid. And uh, you will just like move that many times to the right multiplied by 30. Yeah. Okay, it's it's a little bit of calculation that you can do at a later time, yeah. So uh, when I started the drone show and the same case with the card, if it is no show, then the and then there will be nothing. Oh. Whatever. If, if if it's touching the player, then it would. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, then uh, it Ilm? would like delete one of the collect. And one, one of the clones. Okay, uh, Ilm, I got an idea that uh, uh, one of our students made the Minesweeper program uh, where um, there are like bombs placed behind some of the grid boxes and he created a grid of maybe like 10 by 10 boxes and whenever you would play the game, the bombs would show up at a random grid boxes. And he is in our students for STEM channel as well. And his project presentation about the Minesweeper project is also in uh, uh, on our YouTube uh, channel. So you can also take a look at those and then figure out like how the bombs would go to random places. Or in your case, the keys would go to random places. And if and if it's touching the play, then it would just delete itself and okay. and uh, delete one of keys to the left. Mm. And when I do game over, it deletes. Did the game over right? You win and you lose. That's good. And Move. these are the two sprites. Nice. Also, I forgot to show you the unused costumes of the player and guard. Okay. And these, 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 uh, these are unused costume. These are unused costume, and these are unused costume. Okay. And, and these are used costume. These unused and unused. 
he's mm-hmm. a huge one the the last one obviously the card, makes a lot of sense while in the card this is unused this is unused and this is used mm. and also there are no unused in in those okay all right and this, and this is the thumbnail thumbnail okay you know about the game over thing uh since the uh, grid is mostly in green color and the um, you win text is also mostly in the green color right can you go back to yeah, that yeah it, it, the text is also bold okay but but still like green text over green background it doesn't make it it doesn't keep it very legible i mean it's difficult to read so maybe you could like uh, figure out a different sort of uh, a, a color combination over there Should I darken the color? Maybe. We're we're just talking about the you want text because everything else is quite legible. So there is this website called Coolers. Are you sure? Uh, do you are you familiar with that? We did use it probably in the Python track. That's where we can find a good color combination that would show up really well on the uh, Scratch software. Uh, on the green background. Do you remember that website? Which one? Uh, can you go to a new tab? I'll tell you what which what is that. C double O L O R S. dot c o yes so this is a color generator you can go there and like generate a green color then lock it and then uh, generate other colors that would be uh, uh, that would be suitable to appear on top of the green you uh, you start by clicking on the start the generator button And now these are a few color combination. You just have to press space bar and it will keep on going to the next and next set of colors. You can cross the tutorial. Okay, so these generate color uh, combinations really good. Uh, okay, in, um, is there like a next version of this thing? Next version? Yeah. Next version of what? Of this project. Of the project? Uh, it is the Python version. Okay, all right. Um, no, I meant like, is there an upgrade? Like, are you going to make new levels or like something more in this project? Or are you done with this idea? Uh, I, I will I will add random key setups. And... Mm, yes. Okay. So that would be good. And also, uh, first a new level in Python, then a new level in Scratch. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, Acha, El, so uh, that's great. Uh, this was an amazing project and very well structured. Very neat code, by the way. Like, I haven't seen like this neat code from you and, before. And then uh, now the Python version. Okay. Yeah. How much time did it take you to like make this one? Uh, the Python one. Two days. And, and I I use a book to do this and in Scratch I just I just can I try to convert the Python code into Scratch. Okay. All right. Uh, and I think the Python one is better because of the smooth movements. Hmm. Yeah, it's a lot better. But that grid movement also like looks really well in the um in the, in the Scratch project too. The visuals are obviously a lot better over here. I I think like you weren't able to uh, make the cracks really good in the Scratch bricks. Yeah. 
but it's a good like it's a work in progress and you can still obviously make it better good all right and the and read the code mm -hmm. And this uses, and this is this uses um, Pygame Zero and and random libraries. First is that the grid width and grid height. So so the grid width and the grid height is sixteen by twelve. The grid size is fifty. Mm -hmm. And also and also this is the exact same like of uh, like thirty by thirty grid. Mm -hmm. So I was oh, easily goodness. able to position out about, and I was easy to I got easier access to position th these middle walls. Mm -hmm. And there's the guard move interval and player move interval, and there's the background seed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, achha, in, uh, we're a bit short on time here, so we'll uh, take a look at the Python project in another session where we'll go into the detail of this program, like how this was made with text-based programming. Um, and, but... al and also, this is the code for the map. Yeah, I, I just use letters to, to make the map. W is wall, K is key, G is guard, P is player, and D is door. Good. Like a list of characters. Yeah. Or a list of, yeah, a list of characters. Yeah. Okay. Achha, El, I'm sorry, I have to start my next meeting right away. So we're going to end this uh, over here and uh, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Love us.